Good morning, St. Paul. This is your unbougie foodie, Wesley Wright. Thank you so much for tuning in with us this morning. I hope you're having a great day, or at least starting off a great day. As always, I want to thank you for tuning in to us or to my show or the Unbougie Foodie. And we're here every Saturday at 10 a.m. About 10 (laughs) a.m. No, at 10 a.m. Again, every Saturday right here in WEQI 104.7, the voice of the East Side. You know, and as always, you know, this is a show about food. And, you know, as I like to say, I always like to bring you the pleasures of the table. (laughs) We're talking about, you know, a a dining room table. (laughs) Plates and napkins and paper plates and such and the like. That's the kind of, uh, yeah, that's the kind of table we're talking about. But anyway, more importantly, uh, you're here with me. And for that, uh, I'm truly thankful and grateful. Um, You know, I really wanted to, I always say that, I really wanted to, but I think there are certain things that you have to kind of bring up first and foremost when you are actually talking to your audience. And that, of course, is reminding them where they can, you know, get in contact with you. so there's, of course, Facebook that you could always visit and, you know, see places that I've gone to, uh, comments about food uh, related uh, events, festivals, uh, recipes. Uh, talk to me, you know, send me a message on Facebook so that uh, if you have any questions or a suggestion of some place that uh, you'd like maybe showcased on the show, um, you know, please leave a message there. Uh, or you can always contact me um, by email as well at the unbougie foodie at gmail.com. Again, that's the unbougie foodie at gmail.com. And then, of course, if you really want to whet your appetite, you could go to uh, my Instagram and Twitter to see all my different posts of foods and Uh, food events well more so the food more than anything because you know that's where people want to see what is whetting their appetite or what is going to get them hungry and that's my job (laughs) is to make sure to do that for you uh so yeah you could again the instagram for the unbougie foodie is the underscore unbougie foodie for twitter it is at unbougie foodie Take a listen or view some food. <laughs> Get some ideas on what you could be doing for uh, either the weekend, for the week. You never know. Uh, it could be a meal that you plan out for the entire week. So that will be just as great. But if you want to talk to me now, you can certainly call uh, the Umbuji Foodie uh, at two. Excuse me, 651-200-3479. Again, here at the radio station at uh, the Unbougie Foodie, it is 651-200-3479. I I want to say that the phone lines are open. (laughs) But again, anything that you'd like to uh, talk about, uh, you know, food related, I'm here for you. Before I begin, though, I want to actually uh, mention, not even before I begin, it's imparted in the show but there are a number of we're in food festival time if you would uh or season uh we know that the fair is coming up and i've talked about the fair uh, in the past uh believe me it's not just a whimsical thing that i oh yeah the fair is coming up no i'm very serious about the fair but more closer to home weqi is actually hosting the 7th street live here in st paul um that is August 26th, so please make sure you save the date uh, so that you can enjoy this community, family, and friendly-focused festival that they're having. 
you know, here uh, again on the east side of St. Paul. It's going to be from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, again, August 26th. The address is going to be eight six, eight, excuse me, 895 7th Street, St. Paul, Minnesota 55106. Food, art, live music. It's going to even have a parade. How could you miss this? <laughs> so most certainly uh, this is their third annual and it will be every year it just seems to grow and get more and more exciting uh and again all the fun think about all the people that you're actually going to be meeting i mean you have an opportunity to meet a number of the show hosts uh from the various shows on to here at weqi even myself i will be there i have food to taste don't you know <laughs> that sounded so don't you know <laughs> anyway Again, 7th Street Live, August 26th. You have a little bit of time. You can't say, oh, it's right next, next another two weeks. You have like a month and a half. So plan it out. Save the date. 7th Street Live. It's here for you, for the community. So make sure that you're coming <laughs> and saving that date. Sorry, I didn't want to sneeze. Remember what happened last time. Uh, <laughs> oh my. There we are. Technical difficulty. Um, yeah, aside from that, uh, what it also is coming up, and this, if you're not already familiar, I mean, I think even before, by the time that I came to Minneapolis, or the state of Minnesota, I should say, um, I found out that there was uh, a celebration um, that was done, of course, on a yearly basis, many years, of course, before I came. But Rondo Days, you know, Rondo Days, it's going to be the 31st, 34th uh, anniversary celebration for Rondo Days. And it is going to be Saturday, July 15th. So that's next week, people. Friends, Listeners, please make sure you go out and support uh, the celebration. Um, it, again, is going to be it's supposed to be sunny that day. I know thinking of a week ahead, you know, we have 10 day forecasts and everything. So it helps out a bit. Uh, but it is going to be at the Rondo Education Center Park, uh, which is 560 Concordia Avenue. And that's again in St. Paul. Uh, 55103 um, just art uh, music celebration you know it's a it is a festival so it's going to be you know the years past that I've attended you know the, the parade uh, the dancers I enjoy when young people get out there and uh, and really show their talent the the car I, I guess if you want to call it the car show uh, just really nice looking cars i mean sorry the year that i i really noticed it you know there were what 30 inch or 28 there were some huge rims let's just say that i'm not a car person to to know all the different nuances of tire sizes and styles and so on and so forth i'm you know i'm more of a food person so <laughs> i'm gonna tell you more about food than than that but again it's it's going to be a great night. Um, they mentioned that the festival has grown since its inception in 1983 to be one of the largest African-American sponsored festivals in Minnesota. Um, it features a segment of nine uh, nights of music, which is more of a collaborative effort uh, with the Minnesota History um, Center that kicks off that entire week. Um, there is going to be, again, as I mentioned, a grand parade. A festival featuring uh, uh, live entertainment, again, food, uh, and then service, as well as merchandise vendors that are actually going to be there. And it's going to be a multicultural audience that will be attending. So it's not just, it's very inclusive, if you would. But still, uh, the fact that, you know, it is a festival for the community for you know 
the Rondo neighborhood. <sighs> yeah. Make sure you, that you're heading out there. July 15th. Um, again, this is going to be a Saturday. If you're confused about the date. Uh, from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Again, July 15th at the Rondo Education Center Park. Uh, 560 Concordia Avenue, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55103. So, uh, yeah, a visit out to the celebration on that day would be spectacular for you. Very much so. Yeah, you will truly enjoy yourself. Um, as well as the, the time that you'll be spending. Make sure to take your family because it is a family fun event. And they're very, very... I guess they're very, they have what they feel is a code of conduct, which I think really anyone, no matter who you are, should be conducting yourself as, and oh, I don't want to say adults because everybody's a, an adult or, or whatnot, but just being respectful for of others uh, when when you're at a function or a festival such as this, and it shouldn't just be this one, it should be all of them, but you know, this is not a, a social issue right now, you know, or a social justice. <laughs> We're talking about food, so we need to gear it back towards the food. <laughs> so, again, I just wanted to bring out those um, different festivals that are, are there, that are coming up. Um, definitely you know, 7th Street Live once again, August 26th, and then Rondo Days, July 15th, which is next week's uh, Saturday. Um, I will be here. So, who knows? Maybe WEQY will be at Rondo Days. Or, okay, maybe if you see any of the show hosts, please say hello. Because, again, way to connect with the community and, you know, just show your support. I am going to continue along the lines of just talking about uh, social issues, if you would, or social construct. In this case, it will be about food. Uh, but if you're familiar or if you've known in the past, I've talked about uh, the Minnesota, uh, I believe the Minnesota chapter, uh, food chapter, uh, f food charter, actually, uh, Minnesota food charter. They're just an uh, organization that they are consciously uh, ensuring that communities, neighborhoods, the state of Minnesota, people that are living within the state of Minnesota have the uh, opportunity to have access to good food, nutritious food. And, you know, that's their purpose. Um, they are an adv advocate for that. And th they have a number of resources they try to reach out to um, to assist to make sure that neighborhoods are constantly uh, getting the foods in their neighborhood that they need. Um, because as you know, one part of their mission, uh, if you would, or what they focus on, they want to make sure that everyone deserves access to healthy, safe, and affordable food. So, you know, truly thankful for um, that organization. But I will bring that um, out, if you would, because I wanted to mention that a few uh, weeks ago, I didn't, never get a chance to, uh, they were, I guess, just thanking their, their team uh, as well as letting the community know on advancements and so forth that are happening. Um, that it's it's beneficial, beneficial for you know organizations that are in support uh, or that they support uh, and are advocates too in making sure that food is available um, so that it's it's safe, affordable, healthy, so on. Um, some of these programs, one or two of them I'll mention, um, is the um, ship program, uh, ship which is State Health Improvement um, Partnership. Um, they've received funding. You know, uh, there are some organizations that uh, support uh, food shelters, um, you know, 
similar to that or associated with the, the Good Food Access Program. So they've uh, got increased funding for uh, their support. And uh, another that they mentioned, and I'll talk about these a little bit um, further, uh, the Beginner Farmer Tax Credit. Um, so just to touch on the uh, SHIP, SHIP program, the State Health Improvement Program, uh, it was funded at $35 million for the next two years. Um, and so with that, we know that SHIP works on preventing chronic diseases by strengthening the capacity of uh, communities uh, to create their own healthy uh, future uh, food structure, if you would. Um, and they give examples uh, such as farm to school efforts, workplace wellness, wellness initiatives. Um, we realize that there are times where folks within the community or they may not have the truly healthy foods and beverages within their community. And they have to rely on, if you would, ones that are nearby. Uh, and we've talked about that in the past that, you know, some of these neighborhoods or uh, communities are referred to as food deserts. Uh, we have organizations such as um, uh, the SHIP program that make sure that uh, there is food uh, or opportunities for healthy foods to be brought into the community. Um, the mobile mood, uh, mobile uh, food market, which is right here within the East St. Paul community. Uh, they make that one of their efforts uh, to ensure that, you know, if you can't get out to access healthy foods, we're going to bring healthy foods to you, to your neighborhood. Um, but that's just, uh, again, one initiative or uh, one option that is uh, within our community. Um, I mentioned uh, food shelving. Um, funding for food shelving was increased. Uh, they food shelves, you know, on a yearly basis, they are trying to increase those um, food shelves again in support of making sure that uh, food is available for uh, families that may have difficulty in obtaining uh, food on a, sometimes on. I was going to say a monthly basis, but a weekly, a daily basis. Um, these food shelves, as you know, they provide a, a or they stock uh, actual food stuffs uh, so that uh, families have that opportunity um, if they are going through perhaps financial difficulty or uh, may not have the uh, opportunity to uh, get the necessary foods that they need for their family, they can always go to a food shelf. But that funding was increased. And again, this is all information that I'm, I'm talking about or referring to from the um, Minnesota Food Charter. Uh, Minnesota Food Charter, uh, their website is min or mnfoodcharter.com. So if you want to know some more information, um, definitely visit their website to uh, you know delve deeper into the information that I'm I'm mentioning, but again, uh, those food shelves, uh, even though they didn't reach the goal really that they wanted, um, because normally what 3 million food shelves, uh, food shelf operations, if you would, um, is a normal it's, you know, and they want to increase that and make it available that others, if necessary, need to go there. Uh, they want to be able to have the foods available and assist with the, in the community or the neighborhoods. Um, they did get funding increased uh, for the next, again, two years. I believe it's one to two years. Um, but again, it's you're wondering, OK, well, what type of food are we talking about? Well, it's really for the purchase of proteins, fruits, vegetables, and I thought was interesting, which is diapers. Um, when you go to a food shelf, I mean, again, considering that you know, it is a food shelf, but you're also dealing with um, with families. I mean, you're not dealing with you're supporting families. So why not? One of the one of the basic things when families, aside from food, um, especially if they're dealing with young children, dealing if you are supporting 
uh, families with young children. Uh, aside from food, there is diapers uh, for the young ones or for an infant. Um, and so it, it just as important as providing food, believe me. I am not a parent, but I know parents, and that is one of the one of the things that they talk about too. That diapers is so expensive. So the fact that the food shelf um, organizations that are um, supporting food shelves also recognize that diapers are just as important uh, as food. Uh, gosh, that makes it, it it makes it it shows a level of. Uh, intuitiveness uh, and thoughtfulness on the part of the organizations to know that okay it's not you, you we can feed someone but why not off, also offer uh, a basic need that is integral to a family and which is you know diapers when it comes to young children anyway I got off a little bit of a rant there <laughs> sorry anyway uh, so as I mentioned you know, we talked about the ship program we talked about uh food shelf uh there was the tax credit uh for beginning farmers and you know i thought this was was awesome too i mean I, i've never been in a state where uh, i guess that there has been a a tax uh credit or opportunity for individuals that are interested in having their own farm or running their own farm. But, you know, there's a need for it, of course. So here the it is referred to as uh, the Minnesota Young and Beginning Farmers. What is that tax? Um Gosh, I don't know the name. I thought I knew the name of the tax. But what it describing it is it's a first uh, in the country um, land access bill for young and beginning farmers. Um, these are landowners that would receive a state income tax credit when they either sell or rent their land to a, a beginning farmer. Um, these credits, they equal 5% of sales price or 10% of the cash um, rent fee that they are um, a, getting if you would um and then in turn the beginning farmer they would have to take a class um you know farm management uh a course if you would uh, to qualify for the tax incentive and be eligible for a tax credit covering the full cost of the training so i mean here you are you have landowners that are having their land used being put to use uh effectively if you would uh and the state is recognizing that, you know, giving them an opportunity to pretty much say thank you, uh, as well as uh, an opportunity for young and beginning farmers to not only sustain themselves, their help sustaining their communities uh, with food, um, but, you know, it's something that I think carries on, uh, you know, generation after generation. And I've never been a farmer. I think I talked about a week, a couple of weeks ago, how I, I would love to be on a farm. Uh, yes, it would be hard work, but uh, certainly, you know, to see the fruits of your labor on a weekly basis, uh, not even weekly. I mean, however, whether whether it's you know getting eggs from chickens or you know taking care of uh, any type of livestock, you know, cows. You know, sheep, goats, whichever. Um, here, you know, this Minnesota Young Beginning Farmers, uh, they can see the benefit, if you would, of wanting to help in their community, as well as those that are offering their land uh, to, you know, either buy, to sell it or rent it, um, to also say that they have, they've been supportive uh, to the community and just as food conscious and recognize that uh, their community, their neighborhood, it needs the sustenance um, of farmers locally you know, to help with that. So, um, again, those are just some topics. Uh, I covered them really high level 
um, and there are so many other uh, topics uh, regarding food that the Minnesota Food Charter uh, that they advocate for, uh, that they will uh, you know provide a follow up on or uh, any information that might be associated food related. So again, if you uh, want to learn more about the organization, uh, visit mnfoodcharter.com uh, and you could certainly read more about their strategies, what they have upcoming, uh, you know, how to join their network, just, you know, who they partner with and other resources. So visit them. <laughs> uh, gosh, it's been a while, but uh, I think I wanted, I wanted to bring up because it's also next week um, is the co-op farm tour uh, I talked about this perhaps I'd say maybe about th- three weeks ago or so and we talked about what a co-op is how uh, basically it is uh, you know a, a number of you know farmers if you would that are working together as a cooperative as you know, they would say um, to make sure that their food uh, local farmers are providing foods to a, a, a organization I'm just using as an example ones that we're familiar with more than you know in our community Mississippi market uh, natural food uh, co-op um, sewer community uh, there's the east side food co-op as well I've not been to the east side food co-op uh, Mississippi market though I have been um, when it comes to the food uh, these local farms are the ones that are actually providing that uh, and so Ju- Saturday July 15th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, you have an opportunity again this is all free um, you know to go to these farm tours um, there are 27 urban and rural farms that are going to be opening their doors uh, again for self-guided farm visits. Uh, you're going to be learning as well as discovering, you know, how certain foods and fruits, vegetables, um, and even livestock how uh, they're maintained, how they're grown, not the livestock, but how you know they're maintained, <laughs> how they're cared for. Uh, and it's across the cities. Uh, again, like I said, uh, there are 27. Um, what is we are located in? Uh, there are two specifically in like the Minneapolis and St. Paul area. Uh, if you stop by any of your uh, food, excuse me, your co-ops uh, in your local areas or neighborhood, for instance, Mississippi Market. Uh, they will have information about the co-op farm tour and it's a small booklet or handout if you would uh, it's brought to you by your local community farm, uh, f- uh, food co-ops but it shows you a map of all the different farms that are uh, in the area or that are across the state and I'll say states too because it also covers some in Wisconsin as well so Specifically here in Minneapolis and St. Paul, um, if you're looking at the book or looking at the handout, it is Mississippi Mushrooms. They are located at 3750 North Washington Avenue. Um, they And they said it themselves. It's a bit complicated to find, but when you do, it's totally worth it. And anything actually with mushrooms. So, I mean, if you're a mushroom lover... Yeah, you get an opportunity to see the mushroom farm. Gosh, you know, there people, do you know that there's a lot of different variety of mushrooms? I mean, I know you know this, but yeah, it's a mushroom farm. Ah, chanterelles, trumpet, chicken of the wood, morel. Yeah, just to name a few. Uh, yeah, these are ones that we're probably familiar with more than not. Anyway, Mississippi mushrooms. That is, again, an urban one. Uh, another one is a bee's knees. Uh, 
They're a beekeeping social enterprise that focuses on sustainable beekeeping practices, education, and advocacy. Uh, they are located at 2204 Minnehaha Avenue. And that's uh, uh, Minneapolis 55404. Um, and just a note, you can enter on 22nd Street. You know, trying to wonder how to get to them. Um, but it, it's very interactive. Again, it is a self-guided tour. Uh, both of those that I've mentioned are, you know, you're probably wondering what to expect at both of these places. Well, you have kind of like what's a legend, if you would, um, for the participating farm so that it gives you an idea what you should expect at each one of these places. So for uh, both for uh, the Mississippi mushroom and for the bee's knees, again, they have goods that are for sale. So if you're needing mushrooms, definitely visit M- Mississippi mushroom. Uh, if you any uh, have need for most likely it's honey, uh, paste, I believe they offer some pastries as well, um, but they have samples that are going to be available as well as, again, the open house tour. So both of those local businesses, if you would, and farms, we'll call them farms because that's what they are. Uh, they offer uh, those three activities, if you would. Um, there are so many others, and we can't go into all of them, but certainly if you, uh, again, as I mentioned, visit uh, Mississippi Market as an example or Eastside uh, Food Co-op, uh, there are others. There's Linden Hills, uh, River Market, uh, St. Peter Food Co-op, Harvest Moon, um, The Wedge, so not forgetting about people from Minneapolis, uptown and so on, um, people's food co-op. So there's a wide variety. So it's not just specific to, you know, one or two places that are really getting the support of all these farms um, and the reverse, I should say, uh, farms, you know, bringing in and having a place to um, offer good local produce uh, and meats and artisan items. Who who knew that you would be living in a city and there would be beekeeping uh, in the city's area? You would think of that possibly maybe a little bit further out. But, you know, this is a we're in farm country or farm communities and so forth so we you have an opportunity to see these various types of farms and what they focus on Uh, but again there are 27 of them uh, so many uh, to choose from um well you could some of them you could pick your uh, certain orchards you could pick your own apples uh you could go to creameries um you know, and that's in Hope, uh, Minnesota. It's a, it's a little ways out. I believe that's. I'm, I'm still. You know, again, I'm still. I've been here what nine years, and some of these uh, city names, I or yeah, I get wrong. I think it's Owatonna, I believe. Um, that's where Hope Creamy is located, or it's past Owatonna. Um, but again, uh, make sure that you pick that up, or if you have any. Uh, questions on maybe where the nearest one is to you. If you feel, uh, I'll be more than happy to give you a suggestion to, you know, if I find out what your neighborhood or your area is, you know, feel free to give us a call uh, at 651-200-3479. And I could certainly look on the little map here and be more than happy to tell you (laughs) uh, about uh, one or two places. Maybe that might be near you. (laughs) But if not, you can always go and visit uh, for instance, Mississippi Market uh, to you know pick up one of the farm tour guides. Again, that's July 15th, next week, Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. It is free. Make sure that you are bring your whole entire family because um, it's going to be a fun day. You know? uh, figure that you're going to be spending pretty much all of that time at the farms. Uh, not just, oh, I'm just going to go for an hour. <laughs> You'll be there for a while. There's always something fun on a farm, whether it be urban or rural. 
yeah so much fun on the farm believe me okay we're talking about vegetables and farming and so on and you're probably i don't know you if you've ever gotten a vegetable uh, or herb that okay you know that in one recipe that you're going to have to use it uh but then you wonder okay now what am i going to use <laughs> the rest of it for and one of those ones uh those herbs that i'm referring to uh, is parsley and you know sometimes it's just a let's say a sprinkle of parsley maybe as a garnish or a sprig on top of your finished dish of rice or chicken or or something of that nature but then what do you do with the rest of it you make chimichurri <laughs> now you're probably asking okay what is this word what is he talking about you, you most likely have heard about it before in the past chimichurri uh is uh, more South American, Central American, um, specifically like Argentina uh, type of sauce. And it's uncooked, um, but, you know, the ingredients and everything that you're using or that to make it, again, no cooking involved. But many times it is used for grilling meat uh, and it comes in different versions. More, I think the more commonly seen one that I've seen is uh, more of a red version, and that's referred to as chimichurri rojo. Um, it, you know, and it's made up of, uh, of, I'll tell you the ingredients, and we're actually going to talk about how to make one or make some. But the main ingredients are uh, parsley, garlic, um, uh, oh, yeah, parsley, and, parsley, garlic, and onion, and olive oil. But you could add other flavors as well to make it your own. There, I've seen so many uh, being made. I mean, different varieties. You could make it smoky. You could make it with more pepper flakes so that it's it's has heat to it. Um, the different types of peppers that you choose to you know add to it, it changes the flavor. So you certainly can make your own. We're going to talk about, or I'm going to mention. Uh, how to do just the standard uh, chimichurri sauce and again uh, there is a green version and a red version this one is going to be the green version that we're talking about because it's just it really is just all green vegetables uh, and you know, it's it's excellent for any type of grilled grilled food you know specifically for like steak uh, chicken I've seen it used on fish I, I notice I said I've seen it. I did not say I've tasted it, but I have tasted it on steak. I have tasted it on chicken. Fish, I have not. And I would assume that it would be great for like a salmon, uh, king salmon. Uh, yeah, uh, I you know, with the nice crust of skin at the bottom, and then you know the salmon on top, uh, drizzled some chimichurri sauce over the top of that. Yeah. Are your taste buds live? <laughs> uh, but you can also add it to soups as well as to stews, and that gives it a, a extra zest or um, brightens the flavor, um, you know, to that uh, that dish. Uh, there's even a suggestion of adding it to pasta. Uh, I would think that it would probably an uh, easy one would be uh, maybe penne. Uh, and a chimichurri uh, mixed in because with penne it that looked like the little the pasta that looks like it's almost like a pen because uh, it's cut off at at an angle um, and it's hollow so that those chim the chimichurri sauce itself can get inside of the penne itself and just uh, flavor the penne the pasta in general. Um, and when you take that nice bite of it and you taste the sauce of the chimichurri, yeah, see, I'm, I'm getting a little bit savory up here now, right about now. <laughs> so let me just tell you, there's a few health benefits, though, to having a chimichurri sauce. Because of specifically, you know, the main ingredient is parsley. Um, parsley is a well-known appetite and uh, digestive tract stimulator. So... Uh, it, it helps 
things move along. <laughs> uh, it also has other health properties that include heart as well as immune uh, system protection, as well as anti-inflammatory and antibacterial uh, effects as well. Um, the chimichurri sauce in, in general has a, a source of numerous vitamins and minerals uh, such as A, C, K, folic acid, iron, copper, um, and many others. Very highly nutritious. i um, speaking uh, more about parsley um, because, again, as I mentioned, it helps you digest the food um, that you're you know, consuming. So anything that has parsley in it is going to provide those added benefits. Um, again, very highly nutritious. So if you're interested in making your own, here is a recipe for you. <laughs> so first and foremost, you're going to get a bunch of flat leaf parsley. And of course, you want to remove the, st the stalks. So it's not the leafy portion that you're trying to discard or throw away now mind you you could keep the stocks and probably even add that to if you remember weeks ago or maybe if you've seen online um, there are ways for you to be able to make a, a, a vegetable stock and by adding those uh, and stock meaning s-t-o-c-k so you, when you're talking about chicken stock vegetable stock beef uh, a beef broth or a stock yeah that's what we're talking about the stalks, which is S-T-A-L-K-S, <laughs> uh, from the bottom of the parsley, um, those can be cut off and either saved in a plastic bag along with the other uh, items that you thought you may have thrown away, like onion skins and um, carrot peelings, cucumbers, so on and so forth. Put that in the pl plastic bag and put it in your freezer. Uh or again, if you're not interested in doing that, you can simply remove the stalks and you know, discard them because it really is the leaves that of the parsley that you want. So the next is a half a small red onion and you want to chop that up. Uh, then you have your garlic, two cloves of garlic, two tablespoons of lemon juice, one tablespoon of apple cider, vit apple cider vinegar. <laughs> And then a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes, a quarter teaspoon of sea salt, a quarter teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper, and then about a half cup of uh, extra virgin olive oil. And you may have to adjust that to the consistency that you want. Some may want it a little bit you know, more uh, liquid or, or, or smooth. Others may want it a bit more. You want to really taste the really taste that texture of all the ingredients that you're about to you know, chop and blend and so on and it's really really simple all you're going to do is again take all of those ingredients and combine everything in your food processor and just pulse until it's combined uh, it's supposed to be a little bit grainy but if you want to adjust again the consistency um, you know Either use a little bit more uh, olive oil or else just continue to, you know, uh, pulse and make sure that it's pulsed in the food processor until it's a bit more to your, con you know, consistency. <laughs> um, but just think of all the different items that you're going to top that your maturity with. <laughs> Again, uh, we talked, I just mentioned about salmon, but you know, what about some roasted chicken, uh, and having that, you know, drizzled across the top or even a nice, uh, steak, you know, a sirloin, you know, these, this could actually be the chimichurri sauce could actually also be a marinade too. So taking some of that chimichurri, putting let's say your meat or steak uh, in maybe on a plate or, you know, like a plastic bag is a favorite thing, you know, especially if you're putting it in a refrigerator, you want those juices and everything to just kind of like stay and then work its way into or through the membranes of the meat that you're marinating. Yeah. Plastic bag, I think is best. <laughs> 
and just have that sit in there for about an hour and then grill that. And then still, when you're done with your grilling or however you're going to cook your meat, drizzle a little bit of that over the top of it. And let me tell you, it is delicious. There is uh, a friend. Shout out to Brad. Brad Betger. Thank you so much, sir, uh, for always providing a some type of chimichurri sauce or tapenade. Um, I really enjoy the way that he makes that. It's It's really good. It's really, really good. And I'm going to make my own and uh, see what uh, other people think of it. Okay. The last thing, and not even really the last thing, but as you know, there's always a segment that I'm going to have called (laughs) Get Your Group (laughs) On. And this week, there are a few places. There's actually two places that I have not been to. And one is, you know, really, it's in the community Another one, well, two others, I'll say. Uh, one, one I have been to because I do enjoy their food. Uh, it is uh, D and J's Fish and Chicken. It's in St. Paul. St. Paul. <laughs> they are located uh, north of Mer- north of Maryland on 1700 Rice Street. And I've mentioned it before, but uh, for nine dollars you get fifteen dollars worth of food and if you're if you've not been to uh d and j's before they offer fish chicken burgers gyros uh again nine dollars for fifteen dollars worth of food that's that's really good i'm considering that their prices are very affordable not to say any other place isn't but uh, nine dollars well fifteen dollars a $15 value can go a very, very long way. So get out there and grab that that Groupon. Uh, again, that's up to 43% off regular price, if you would, considering that, again, it is $9 for $15 value. Uh, they are located, once again, at 1700 Rice Street, uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, 55113, uh, just north of Maryland. The next is Silhouette Bakery. I have not been to Silhouette Bakery, so someone has to kind of maybe tell me or else I'm going to have to go there myself and, and let you all know what I what I find out because uh, it's gotten really great reviews, actually. But Silhouette Bakery, uh, again, it's also in the St. Paul neighborhood, if you would, uh, 383 University Avenue uh, West. That's St. Paul 55103. Um, That's in South Frogtown area. So really right off of the green line. It's on University. Um, If you're on the green line going either direction, really, um, you can see that on the north side of University. uh, Right at, I think it's Western. Western and University. Uh, But they offer for... Two ten dollar vouchers uh, for eleven dollars. So literally, you're getting a twenty dollar value for eleven dollars. Now, of course, please make sure that you're going to check uh, on what you know the fine print is because you know that there are some values that expire after a, a certain time frame. But uh, there is a group on that you could actually uh, go out and get in. Uh, really enjoy. Uh, they offer a, a number. Of, I mean, I'm looking at one specific image that they have, and it's like a lunch. Uh, it's a rice bowl, I believe. But they also offer again. It's a bakery, so we call it a bakery and bistro. So you could have your. Uh, if you have a sweet tooth, you could certainly go there and visit and grab uh, maybe a, a macaroon or uh, one of the other pastries that they offer. Um, very delicate and very light pastries that you could enjoy. Uh, not something that's overly heavy, but then also you could have something substantial uh, for lunch. But again, eleven dollars for two ten dollar vouchers. So again, twenty dollars for eleven dollars. <laughs> Make sure you go and get your Groupon. <laughs> uh, no, get your get your Groupon. <laughs> 
yeah that's what i'm gonna continue to say it make sure you get your group on <laughs> oh man it has been a wonderful time uh time gosh has gone by really fast uh like i said i say this i think every week but i just want to you know keep reiterating it as you know food brings people together and whether it be talking about it or mentioning it uh just in passing people are interested in finding out oh what type of, what's being talked about if it's food and is it something that i might be interested in uh my interests you piqued my interest and i want to know more well that's what this show is about and i hope you've enjoyed your time with us on today the saturday morning uh if you have any inf- questions regarding any of the information that i've mentioned or talked about today please feel free to leave me a message on my facebook page or again send me an email at the unbougie foodie uh, at gmail.com uh, visit any of my other social media uh, outlets, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Instagram is uh, the underscore unbougie foodie. Twitter is at unbougie foodie. Uh, let me remind you once again before I leave, uh, August 26th, 7th Street Live. Uh, that is going to be from 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, right here. It's actually down the street from where I currently am <laughs> at WEQI. And then next week also is Rondo Days. Uh, make sure that you are going uh, out to that annual uh, festival and celebration. It is the 34th annual uh, celebration or anniversary celebration. Um, that's going to be from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Man, the time really has just kind of left me. <laughs> Uh, But we're at the top of the hour. Again, I want to truly thank you for listening to uh, myself. I am Wesley Wright, your unbougie foodie. Uh, Joining me again next week where, again, I'll have some other topics all about food uh, that if you'd like to join in, feel free. But as I leave you, I always want to encourage you never to let anyone tell you what type of foodie to be. Because really, it is all about the food. Until next time.